weekly rankings, please. Muncher Drill. Avoid munchers in this perilous mine. Difficulty, three stars. You know what? I'll be honest. Three stars seems uh, pretty apt for something that has a 2.7% clear rate. Okay, you got a Z-jump. You Z-jump. You Z-jump. I hit the wall. I hit the chocolate mountain. If I had not hit the chocolate mountain, we would have been under control. Just like that. Okay. All right. I see, I see what you want from me here. Oh, baby. We're bouncing, boy. Oh! <laughs> Is Rob not around today? Can we get an exclamation point Robert in chat, please? I'm, I feel like I've, I've mentioned the... It, it, fairly recently, like within the past 45 to 55 seconds, the Robert situation. Robert's computer requires a micro center trip that will be taking place, I believe. I mean, it's, it's his it's his life is his computer, but that I believe will be taking place on uh, on Monday of next week, at which point there's a chance he could be around for, for Wednesday and next week. For now, though, I did send him by courier uh, the, the, the pages of posts from the Reddit thread yesterday, and I said, don't let this shit happen again. I'm taking a lot of heat because of your power supply blowing up, and honestly, it's unacceptable. So those should be arriving... Whoa! At some point within the next uh, 36 hours, is my guess. He does have to sign for them at his door, though. So I don't know if he's going to get them right away. You jump at the coins, dude. <laughs> Cash on delivery, yes, exactly. Um, exactly. This guy, this guy ships. This guy definitely ships. So I, I guess, like, the whole point of this level is... Munch your hitbox bad, upvotes to the left. Oh, you son of a bitch! You son of a bitch. You put a checkpoint right after a big muncher. Hitbox four times the size of the muncher. You think that's funny, don't you? Well, I don't think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Okay, why don't you, why don't you come out this way? There you go. How do you feel about that? Pretty good? Me too. All right. Probably should not have just gone for the jump immediately. It is, uh, it is more generous than Malf's, uh, jumps. I love, uh, I think we just do, we do a roly-poly bounce there. I, I watched Malf starting to make his second level, and he made a jump that I think is literally impossible. And tested it. Oh, okay, I get it. Tested it for like 10 minutes and died to the saw over and over. And he's like, I'm pretty sure you can get through this. And I was watching it and I'm like, I don't think you, I don't think you can get through it. I didn't see how it resolved though. I didn't see if he, if the madman, why would you double bounce? If the madman stuck with it. He got rid of it. I'm telling you, he's, he's, he's pushing the envelope too far. And I blame myself, I really do, because I, you know, beat his last level so quickly that uh, I think he was like, we got to make it harder. The way that you make a level harder for me, though, is not by making a tighter jump. It's by, uh, if you make the level easier, I will focus less and thus do worse. Or just make it longer, that's true. You could just make it longer. Or you turn on low gravity. You could turn on low gravity. That's true. Low gravity messes me up pretty badly. Make you wait 20 seconds at the start of the level. Have a key puzzle in it. No, here's my opinion on Mario Maker levels with uh, puzzles. They're bad. Thank you for coming to my TEDx talk. There we go. It's over. GG. 
bad. Is that what it says? This is GG bro. GG bro. <laughs> I thought, you you don't get a lot of... Seven in the chat, by the way. You don't get a lot of fidelity when you're, when you're using, uh, you know, only blocks to, to give your text. It's like making a smartphone in Minecraft. So, of course, after you beat a level, you got to give it at least a couple of cracks. Of, as Dan would call it, frame, per frame perfecticity. It's the last week for Daniel to get a win. Do you think he can do it? Who does he play? Like he doesn't play me or Bear, because we play each other. So it's Ma it's Jasky. There's a chance, but I definitely would... I mean, you got it. The smart money, without even being toxic at all, is on Jasky. I really feel like Dan... If he's gonna get a win, without being disrespectful, it's gonna be against Mathis or Jasky. Oh my god! So... I really... I mean, to be honest with you, I think Jasky should be gifted, like, two wins. In the checkpoint league because he plays all the matches at like 7 a.m. New Zealand time. So if if Jasky loses, I actually think that Jasky, like, there's a case to be made for just canceling that game. I'm just gonna be honest. I hit the I like it button on this. I don't really like the muncher. It's still it's a good level, don't get me wrong. I just don't really like the, the Muncher theme here. Here we are now. Entertain us. Piranha Nirvana. I get it. I get it. Big Muncher, not my favorite obstacle. Okay, an auto-scroller. Math is just... Is, is in tears right now and he doesn't even know why. Math is look away. Yahoo. We could have done that one. We could have made that one. Send it and a super send. Never hurt anybody. Oh, I don't know if we can make it anymore. We can, but then I died. Is 20 Timbits in one sitting too much? Yes. I'm trying to think, like, the serving size for Timbits, which are, like, donut holes, is probably, like, six Timbits. That might seem conservative. Hell, it might even be conservative. 20 is is a little much, you know? That's, that's a little out of the pocket. Rep. That's, like, a full donut? Well, I mean, the serving size for a donut is probably, like, one. So that makes perfect sense. It's not like when you buy donut holes, you're like, Oh, I couldn't possibly eat a whole donut. Just give me 24 donut holes instead. They serve a different a different subset of... of, of food... appetite. Just eat some donuts at that point? Are people under the... They're operating under the assumption that, a, you know, eating a serving of donut holes is somehow better than eating a whole donut? Here's a, the real uh, hotness for you. If you're getting proprietary Timbits from Tim Hortons, the donut holes, a.k.a. the Timbits, just taste better than their crappy old dusty donuts. You just get them because they taste better and they're more shareable. I would eat a Timbit, no problem. Especially, oh, like the chocolate glaze Timbits? That's some good stuff. All Tim Hortons donuts, they offer no appeal to me anymore. Good, good work. Ha! Ah! I can get down with a Timbit. Timbit is like the ultimate Canadian, like... It's like the Canadian version of, like, bringing a pizza to an event. You just show up and you're like, Hey guys, I got Timbits. And you're like, well, I'm not hungry. But like, yeah. 
I'll have a Timbit or two. Is this a Timbits ad? I actually hate Tim Hortons. As both as like a restaurant, quote unquote, and also as a corporation. But I'll, I mean, they didn't invent fried sugary dough. But they do benefit from it. The Timbit is an acceptable snack treat. On taste alone. Okay, we're still going. Oh! That's devilish. That's devilish. They don't look like little pieces of shit or nothing. Do you hate them more or less than Ford? Um, I hate- I dislike Tim Hortons more than I dislike the Ford Motor Corporation. It's true. It takes a lot for me to say that. I haven't wasted nearly as much money in my life at Tim Hortons as I have at, uh, Ford. But that's really, like... At least Ford... Like, I almost just feel bad for the Ford company. Because they just, like, are not good at operations anymore. Is really what it comes down to. I wouldn't say I feel bad for them, like... I mean, I don't. But, like, in some ways, it's more of an insult to say I feel bad for them than to say how I re really feel, which is screw them. So instead of hitting them with the I hate you, I'm really hitting them with, like, the I pity you. So... But Tim Hortons is more offensive to me because... They, their whole brand image, I mean, stop me if you've heard this one before. Their whole brand image is, uh, being, like, wholesome and Canadian. And then behind the scenes, they're like, if you raise minimum wage, we're gonna have to yank up the price of our donuts. Also, we exclusively hire, like, the cheapest foreign labor that we possibly can. And I'm like, well, you don't get to double dip on that. You don't get to be like, there's nothing more Canadian than a Tim Hortons donut and be like, we're paying people from other countries less than it's legally possible to pay a Canadian in order to work here. This is essentially what it comes down to. It's not a gas leak, it's the vacuum. Welcome to my life. It's just, it's, it's like Ubisoft DRM. It's always on. Although, in some ways, I guess it is kind of Canadian to be like, Canadians are nice, and then behind the scenes be like, actually bending people over on employment standards. But I don't think that's uniquely Canadian. I think that's... That's an ex-Commonwealth nation classic right there. But anyway, the other reason... Like, I'd probably financially support, like, a lot of companies that kind of suck. However, like, like in terms of their, you know, the way that they treat their employees. However, Tim Hortons makes the cardinal sin of also not making a good product. And that is unforgivable. Whoa! What corporation doesn't do that, though? I mean, I always go... I, and again, this is, like, not the way you should probably, you know, feel about a company's labor standards. But I'm always, like... Anytime I've talked to a Starbucks employee, they're like, it's not the greatest job in the world, but the company's actually pretty nice to us. You know, they give us uh, benefits and they pay us more than minimum wage. And I'm like, you know what? It doesn't make them saints, but it makes them better than Tim Hortons. That's just my two cents. Costco? Yeah, you know what? Costco does seem nice. I've heard very nice things about Costco. Are they, they're constantly in like the uh, like best multinational chains to work at list. That's pretty cool. Best food court available. Absolutely true. Oh.
Look, all I'm saying is if you really want to get back at the bad companies, get a job for them and perform just well enough to not be fired, but not good enough to actually improve their bottom line. It's called Praxis, sweetheart. I did that for a year and it sucked. <laughs> Played Mountain River Roll for my family. They laughed at me. Dude, you want a job that sucks? And I feel weird saying this. I don't know if it's actually a non-profit. I think it is. But Goodwill was legitimately like... I think I would not let my child work at Goodwill if they had a choice. It's like the company... Well, at least, like, the place I worked at kind of sucked. They paid nothing, which is, you know, again, if they're a non-profit, I, I get it, but, like, still kind of a little stinky. Um, and then, like, safety standards were incredibly bad. And people would also just drop off garbage. Even the stuff that, like, you know, like the hand-me-down stuff that people donate... Usually they're like they don't they don't launder it before it comes in, you know? It it comes kinda half dusty. <laughs> you know, nobody's like, hey, before I donate this old shit to Goodwill, I'm gonna put it through the wash. Maybe some people are, but most people just go into the attic and then like, you know throw some shit in the box. But then like some people literally like brought boxes that had like rat shit in it. Or would literally just, like, leave their garbage outside of the Goodwill, which is just something that I don't understand. The only way I could really think about it is that they're, like... They, they were like, this place has... they throw shit out. They got... they know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this garbage. They know what to do with it. So anyway, I... working at Goodwill sucked really bad. That's that's my two cents. That that company will not make the list of uh, best places to work. And then the greatest insult: I had six weeks of work experience when I worked at Goodwill. The next summer, I applied to work at Value Village. Dropped off an application. They never even gave me a call back. That's like the ultimate disrespect. I couldn't get a job at Value Village, despite having relevant work experience. <laughs> Value Village, by the way, is, uh... It, it's a goodwill that, uh... Supports the Canadian Diabetes Foundation, I believe. Okay. That's a tough jump. That's a tough jump. There you go. I think we can afford to go a little bit more to the right. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. You got to do big jumps there. Value Village doesn't wash their clothes before they let people try them on. Okay. Let me, let me ask you. I'm gonna. You're not gonna like this. In a post-COVID world, it's a little gross. However, what's up? Oh, Kate said, it's okay, McDonald's didn't even take my application. All I was gonna say is... That wasn't, like, recently, right, Kate? I hope you would have let me know. Um, she said no. But, um... Now, you should definitely, like, disinfect, etc, etc. You know, wash the clothes as people use them. But, like, as long as they wash them when they're donated, if they don't wash them, if it's, like, a shirt... And, or a jacket, and they don't wash it after everybody tries it on. I almost am, like, okay with that, simply because of the fact that they probably operate on thin margins and are also uh, essentially like a charitable organization. That I'll, I'll give them something there to lower their operations cost. That's my two cents. 
Can you still hear the vacuum when it gets turned on? The door was open to give me that McDonald's anecdote, and now there's quite a lot of white noise there. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over here. Try to maintain the pristine-ish bubble of my uh, of my audio environment. Yeah, like, do clothing stores, like, you know, department stores, Old Navy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, do they wash their clothes if you, like, try on a, a shirt? I would assume not. Maybe after this, yes, but... And I'm aware, because I laugh at it every time I've been in there. Value Village has a, uh, a strict... No underwear try on policy. If you try if you try on underwear, you're buying that underwear. Sorry. I just punched my microphone. Value Village, I got nothing against it. It's a great place to buy a board game that's missing a couple pieces. Okay, the needle was moved. The needle was temporarily moved there. Look, let's be honest, I haven't applied for a job in like 10 years, but, uh... It was a very demoralizing summer or two, in 2007, 2008. Where I, like, applied for a job at Staples, didn't get a call back. Applied for a job at Value Village, didn't get a call back. That, that one kind of hurt. I'll admit, that one, that one led to some hurt feelings. That's so why I said, fine, I'll teach English to children instead. Look at that, we did it. Not qualified to sort through old blouses. Give me a room full of Korean 10 year olds, I'll teach them a new language. You know what, I'll hit you with an I like it. I like it. What about working for YouTube? Um, I mean, the pay is really good. The benefits are pretty bad, and they never communicate. But jump among uh, jump among blue platforms and shells on this magic adventure. I didn't even try for the frame perfectity on that one. I I didn't like the level enough, honestly. Oh, now now we're talking. Now we're talking. It's my kind of level! Whatever I want to do. Oh. This seems like a good level. Good practice for Apollo's levels as well. It's got a very Apollo style DNA to it right now. Oh! We could have done it. We could have done it. I tried to volunteer at a food bank, and they didn't call me back. That's, I mean, that's a sad story. I guess they didn't need any help. Maybe nobody donated a phone. Yeah, you ever think about that? Yes, it's a joke at a charity's expense. It's not making fun of the charity. Get over it. Rep. <laughs> I, t I tell you, like, you know, I'm not gonna have a lot of time for probably like a while in my life. I wouldn't mind volunteering. I've gone through this exact bit before, but I feel the same way, so I'm gonna repeat it the same way. I want to volunteer, but I want, like, if I volunteer at the soup kitchen, I want first choice of, of role. I'm not saying I deserve it, but I want it. I don't want to ladle the soup. I'll, I'll chop onions, cut celery, stir the pot, whatever you need. I just, I would prefer to not ladle. I would prefer to not be the ladler. Okay, that's, that's what you do there then. Why is that? I think it would give me a repetitive stress injury. 
I would be the guy who puts the roll on the tray. I'll put the roll on the tray. Oh. Chomping onions wouldn't? Yeah, but I like chomping. Chomping's more fun than ladling. It's just science, sweetheart. What? Ladler's elbow, exactly. You, oh, you've never heard of Ladler's elbow? Must be nice to have lived such a privileged existence hither to this point. Or alternatively, wait, here's my thinking. What if I was like, hey, I'll donate a food processor, like a Cuisinart that, that will auto chop this stuff, but I have to I get to be the one who mans the the Cuisinart. <laughs> Like, I have a condition... Nobody's gonna think you're a good guy for giving a conditional donation. But, like, hey. Oh, we're so close. I just don't want to ladle. I don't want to ladle. Oh, sweep? I don't mind sweeping. I just don't want to be the ladler. I'm, I don't want to deal with any, like, customer service issues in case somebody's like, hey, give me... Give me a scoop from the bottom instead of a scoop near the top. A scoop near the top is all broth. A scoop near the bottom gets a little bit more meaty. I don't want to deal with the customer service complaints. I want to, I want to cook the soup. Plus, that's I'm a good soupier. That's where my talents lie. He's done it, kind of. That is actually what they say. I've been the ladler. Yeah, back in the in the before times, I used to go to uh, a deli now and then. And whenever uh, I usually got a sandwich or a salad, but they're a big soup place. Maybe like one in ten. Not not the most people for sure, but like one in ten people would backseat the ladler and be like, "Give me the scoop off the bottom." You know, that's where most of the chicken is. And I'm like, all right. See, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, they have a rule where one person can't get all the meaty soup. Leave one person with, like, mostly just broth. Why not give them a scoop from the bottom? Because it's not fair to the people that come after them. You give them a scoop from roughly the middle, you stir it up, and you give them a scoop from roughly the middle so that everybody gets the same concentration of... of meat and broth. That's the only way to do things fairly. If you give them a scoop from the bottom then every person that comes after them is going to get a disproportionately high amount of broth and a disproportionately low amount of the ingredients that are denser. Oh! That's what I'm saying. You see, it's more complicated than it seems. At least, you know, if you're working in a soup kitchen, nobody's going to be like, hey, I don't like the soup. <laughs> They're gonna be like, thank you for the soup. Even if the soup sucks, you're not getting any, uh, you're not getting a whole lot of customer service complaints. And that's the dream. I wonder what that's like. Is it socially acceptable to ask for all broth? I feel like asking for all broth is more acceptable than asking for more solids. Because the broth tends to, tends to be the less desirable part. I mean, everybody wants a mix, don't get me wrong. But if you if someone comes in and is like, hey, I'd just like the broth, I would try to accommodate them. If someone it's like someone being like, hey, instead of giving me mashed potatoes, can I just have twice as much lobster? It don't work like that. If you were like, hey, don't give me the lobster, I'll take twice as much potatoes, I'd be like, sure, no problem. That's true. I am the guy who hears the complaint coming to the ladler. And I look at the ladler and I go, what are you going to do? And he goes, dude, I know. I can't believe the complaints people are having. And then we both look to the camera and go. That's why I don't want a ladle. Everything else, I'd be happy to volunteer. 
No, oh, baby. He's done it. GG, bro. That was a good level. It, literally, this is a Seinfeld episode. Have you, uh... Did you see that clip from Jerry's new special? I will try to frame Perfecticity, this one. Where, uh... Literally, like, the joke is... That... I... It, Netflix is a joke. Is That's the name of the Twitter account. It's Netflix's, like, comedy brand account. They tweeted a clip from his special that made me laugh because it was, like, so Seinfeldian, but in, like, the worst way possible. It was like, the phones keep getting smarter. Why can't we? And I was like, As, that's our Jerry. My God. He's done it again. <laughs> The phones keep getting smarter. Why can't we? Just picture him workshopping that bit. That's one of those jokes that like you have different standards for a comedy special. If he said that in comedians with cars or in cars getting coffee, I would be like, you know what? That's kind of cute. Oh. But for a, to actually make that into like a, a joke that makes it into a 45 minute comedy special, I would be like, come on, Jerry, you can do better than... You can do better than... The, the phones keep getting smarter, why can't we? I know you... I've watched Comedian, Jerry, I know you got it in you. Riding in cars with comedians getting coffee. My favorite Drew Barrymore movie. You know that one? Riding in cars with boys. Oh! Come on, come on. Some of the jokes in the new special are over a decade old. I was kind of concerned about that. So I actually... I think Jerry Seinfeld is very funny. Now here's the non-controversial part. I don't think he's a great stand-up comedian anymore. I think stand-up... That's not how you do that. I think stand-up has kind of passed him by. I think when he's doing improv with his friends, he's funny. And uh, when he writes, he he's funny. Um, no, I don't even... Like, even when he was on Seinfeld, I don't think his stand-up was great. I'm talking about, like, in the 80s. Where people were still like, he, you, you do park on a driveway and drive on a parkway. What the heck? This guy's got it all figured out. Oh, come on. But, uh... Like, he had another special that came out like three years ago or last year. I don't know. The flow of time is distorted. And I watched it and I was like, man. This guy's just like... Like, I honestly, I think it's time for Jerry to say the F-word. I think... <laughs> I know it's, he's against it. He says you don't need to say the F-word to be funny. But I'm telling you, if he came out with a new special that was like... <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld, too hot for TV. And was like, you know what's fucked? I would be like, oh, shit. <laughs> I gotta see this, dude. He's going off. Alright, I'm gonna give this one more try. You know who's a fucking idiot? I think that would that would be great. That that might be just the kind of electricity he needs. Not like he needs to really, you know, rework his life. He seems to be doing pretty well for himself. Okay, get me out of here. Yeah, what the fuck is up with the fucking airline food? People would I genuinely think people would lose their lives. Monty's Zaduba. 